everybody welcome back to my channel it's me chameleon girl Gina and today I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I like to prepare and make my beef chuck short ribs now because this is a more expensive cut of me anything that's kind of expensive on beef I always like to about bring it to room temperature before I start uh, seasoning it and cooking it and so on. So with that being said, these have been sitting on my, uh, right over here for a couple of hours, okay? And so of course, uh, well, like just for three pieces, it's, yeah, it's about $15, okay? So uh, it makes a lot of meat though, that's the good thing about it. But anyway, delicious, delicious meat. And then what else uh, you will need is some coarse uh, kosher salt because this has a, it, it has a way of kind of like making your meat more tender, kosher salt. And then a little white pepper. This is not like you have to have white pepper or else it's not going to come out right, but I like white pepper in this particular recipe. I like a little garlic salt. And I like onion powder. Then I like, of course, my paprika. Any kind of paprika is fine. It doesn't really have some kind of a flavor that's going to throw it off, whether it would be smoked or this kind or that kind. But um, lastly, you'll need some black pepper. And you'll need a little olive oil. And possibly a little butter in the skillet. But in the meantime, what you're going to actually do is you're going to get your packs open of your meat. And then you're just going to put them in a bowl instead of, you know, throwing them down in the sink. Oh, this is actually four pieces because it's one. So that's the perfect amount. And as you guys can see, it's really a marbled meat for that good, good flavor that you want in beef. And actually, this is like five pieces. I thought it was just four, but anyway, that's like five pieces in one pack, and I'm gonna let you guys see that as I just go ahead and begin to wash them off. Can you see I'm gonna put them down in there, and on this pack, it looks like four pieces. So a total of nine pieces, and that's actually perfect for my family size. And so then I like to walk, begin to go ahead and just set them down in there. And just get them all washed up. And we'll be back in just a minute and get those seasoned for you guys. Okay guys, so the first thing you're gonna start with is you wanna have your uh, little pat of uh, butter um, in the skillet so that at this point we're going to go ahead and start getting that warmed up while we're seasoning uh, the the short ribs okay the beef short ribs and so then the first thing I like to do with uh, beef short ribs and even like my baked chicken is I like to actually just dot a little oil over them over whatever it is I, and then I kind of just patted these dry with the paper towel after I was done washing guys um, the oil is just going to help it as far as uh, keeping the seasonings um, adhere to the meat. And then I go ahead and I start by putting a little bit of kosher salt. And I know that a lot of people say, well, just use exact measurements and stuff. But this, you know, a lot of times it's to taste. But if I had to measure, I would say that um, you're going to use about three-fourths teaspoon on of salt actual salt on one side and then uh, we'll go in and add some pepper which is a, at least a teaspoon one to that side as well so just kind of scoot that to the side the next thing we're going to do is go in with some uh, onion powder and I've got my heat on about five and a half on the skillet, okay? So then we'll next, we'll add a little onion powder. Not onion salt, because we're going in with the garlic um, salt. And you don't want to ruin no kind of meat 
that, you know what I mean, you don't want to ruin any meat, you know what I mean, but not any expensive cut, especially. Okay, so that's that side. And so what I like to do is just kind of flip each one of them over. Oh, yeah, yeah, I go ahead and at this point I'm going to flip each one over. Then after I flip those over, give your hand a little rinse off or whatever. And at that point, I'm going to go in with garlic salt. So salt, regular salt on one side, and then on the other side, you're going to use about three-fourths uh, teaspoon of garlic salt. I like garlic salt over garlic powder because it has a more specific taste to it. You know what I mean? It just tastes a lot different than the powder to me. Really, it is a big difference though. I guess most people get it. But. So anyway, now on this side I'm doing white pepper. And then I'm going to add a little bit of paprika. Just a very little bit, so about a half a teaspoon of paprika. And now on this side, I'm also going to go really, see, I'm going to do about one third of uh, coarse salt, just a dot of coarse salt on there. And that's just basically not anything, it's not even for more flavor, it is because you want to, to get that uh, tenderizer to come on out of there. You want it to help tenderize your meat. So at this point, I just kind of pat them, start patting them together so that the olive oil covers all sides and all bases. So just kind of like that. Okay. And you can also just give them a nice rub too that's easier whatever you know kind of floats your boat is what you're gonna do to cover them so I'm just gonna also kind of rub them up a little bit and there are people who definitely say you should massage your beef to get it nice and tender um, I've never tried it but it definitely makes sense if you just really think about it so then you just kind of finish up in there just go on just keep on rubbing all that in Hope everybody's feeling all right too, you know what I mean? So let me know how you guys are doing in the comments. Hope everybody's all good and well. Now I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this, but I'm thinking about maybe a little mashed potatoes and um, a little gravy and a green vegetable because I have some Brussels sprouts in there, so maybe that before they go bad because they're gorgeous and I don't want to ruin them. So they make some garlicky. Brussels sprouts. Okay, so then at that time, once you got all of your flavoring kind of in there, give your hand a little rinse. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab my tongs. And I see that my butter is good to go because it has a little bit of brown. So you want your butter to definitely melt and get that little brownness, okay? Just kind of swirl the first one around to spread out your uh, butter in that cast iron skillet. Y'all know what I like, and that is definitely a cast iron. And then I'm going to turn these down with the fattier side down, okay? And I just kind of put that in there. Fattier side down on all of them. Get them all going in there. And um, when I first started loving beef short ribs, we, me and my husband, we had this anniversary party one year. And the hotel um, that hosted it, that we hosted it, and, uh, they made these. And that was my first time really, really having them. Uh, oh my gosh, you're talking about a great, great, delicious meal. 
And then just stick that on down there. And get that last little guy right in there as well. And let it begin to just turn a nice golden brown. So you're gonna cook this in here for probably about three or four minutes or so. And um, what I was going, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Oh yeah, so just cook it for about three or four minutes. I'm actually gonna put my heat to about six. You know, so it's a little like a kind of more on the high medium side. I just actually. So it's going to be, I'm going to push it to 7, so change that. Let's go and put it on about 7, because, you know, you just want them to get brown. Uh, what browning does for your meats, um, and the reason why a lot of people prefer to brown their meat before just, like, throwing it in the oven, like, even with the pot roast, it makes the meat way more juicy. So if I was to take uh, like a beef pot roast or um, something like that and, you know, wash it and season it and just take that raw meat and just put it in my casserole dish and throw it in the oven, it, one, it takes even longer for it to cook. And then two, it, um, it's just not going to be as juicy and the flavors don't get married as good in there. Um, do I do it sometime? Yeah, but I try to really avoid doing that. I try to brown for the most part, part my meat. Um, so anyway, we're just going to let that keep going for a few more minutes. And I'm going to give this a rinse right quick, so I'll place them back on here, and then we'll move to the next step. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so now I went ahead and I turned down my, my, uh, my stove top. So we're about medium heat now, because now that it's gotten nice and hot, they're nice and brown now. See, these guys are ready to be flipped over, and I'm going to show you guys real quick how they kind of look them. Just nice and brown. Taking on that juiciness, and then remember the butter has a little salt in it too, so... You want to, you know, be careful with overboard salt. You know, it's just, you don't want to ruin that meat going too far. And so all in all, brown them on about six for a few minutes, so about three minutes, maybe four, it may take you four. Okay. So with that juiciness, as you guys can see in here, it has that going on. And just gonna let it finish browning. Okay guys, so now at this time comes the fun part. And as you guys can see, they're already starting to get tender, you know what I mean, to the touch. But we're gonna go ahead and take those bad boys out of there. Just sit them on your clean cookie sheet. And see, nice and golden and stuff. Nice and brown. And we got that. Oh, that's really a meaty one. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great tasting meat. As you know, sometimes meat and it tastes all weird, like elbow meat or whatever, but this one is just so good. And so, then guys, what I'm going to do, because I don't have a whole bunch of time right now, so we're going to use the Instapot. And so anyway, we're going to go over this way. And then we're going to turn our Instapot to where it says meat. And I'm going to set my Instapot, probably what I like to do usually with my meat is... approximately 65 minutes no about 75 minutes so that's one hour and 15 minutes in my instapot and so what you want to do this is not hot yet guys so if you want to come on up so with the instapot 
I just add about four cups of water to that. So in the bottom, four cups of water. And then of course I'm gonna take the largest ones, like for instance, that one's really a big one. I wanna put that in the, the bottom of there. The reason why is because, you know, not that the Instant Pot doesn't cook evenly or anything, but I just kind of want it to uh, be, because those are bigger, just kind of get them down in there a little bit more. So, there we go. Take a look in there. And the last thing that I'm going to do I'm going to actually pour the oil off from that um, where I was cooking it. I just want that oil in there. Because there's nothing but flavor there. Okay. And then I'm going to take and close my lid on and let it go. So we're going to let that cook for one hour and 15 minutes. Actually, you know, I should let it cook for, yeah, I'll let it cook for one hour and 15 minutes, but really and truly, you can probably get it done in 60 minutes, but that's just my magic number that I always do my meats on. And then when I come back, it just kind of came to me that what I'm going to do is actually add some potatoes in here. And then for my side, I am going to have the Brussels sprouts. And so with that being said, I'll see you guys back here in a minute. Okay guys, so I decided to go ahead and do the Brussels sprouts and what I'm doing is just cutting them, just taking them and cutting them right in half and then just cut them in half as best as you can get them there and what I'm going to do is take some garlic and just kind of uh, sprinkle it all over it so I got some fresh garlic here as you guys can see and I'm gonna just uh, put a little bit in to the Brussels sprouts as well as a little bit of um, excuse me salt and pepper and so have you. But anyway, I want to kind of just have that chopped up coarsely. And then what we're going to do is go over to my skillet here real quick. And we're going to start putting the Brussels sprouts in there. I always love Brussels sprouts, guys. I really, really do. So then, what I'm going to do is quickly go ahead and pour in a little less than a cup of water to just let them get a little bit slightly steamed while they, um, they kind of cook away. So I'm going to have my temperature on here at about 225 degrees in this one. Right now I'm going to add a little bit, just a very little bit of seasoning. Being like, I'm going to do an ever so little bit of onion powder. Just a little onion powder, guys. Then... I'm going to go ahead and with just a little bit of garlic salt. So garlic salt I like better than the other um, powder, you know. And then I do some black pepper sometime, and that's what I'm going to do today. Oh, 
Well, you probably want to at least use a teaspoon of black pepper for color. And then what I'm going to do is turn it up just a slight bit to about, oh, we're going to do about 300 degrees on um, covered for just a few minutes here. So about, oh, we're going to say six minutes or so and kind of swirl them around, add a little bit more seasoning, and then we're done. So that's what's going to go with the um, short ribs, the beef short ribs tonight. And then we're also going to do some potatoes, but I'll come back and I'll show you how I finish it off with the potatoes, okay? See you soon. Okay, guys, so it looks like our, um, our meat is done. And it is looking delicious. Look at that piece. There's no bone. It just fell right off the bone. Oh my gosh. Oh, another piece that's not even on the bone. Oh my gosh. You're talking about something being good. This is going to be a great meal for my family and I. I want you guys to try making it. Let me know how it comes out for you. But yeah, it's pretty delicious. Pretty good meal. Oh, there's a bone, no meat. Oh, guys. Oh, this looks so good. Oh, so tender. Oh, there's another one that just fell off the bone. Oh, man, a couple bones with no meat because it's so tender. Oh, this is going to be so good. Look at that, guys. And like I said, if you guys want to do it in the oven, then you certainly can do that. Um, but the thing about it is that, you know, you're going to want to cook it. If you do the oven, cook it for about uh, three, three and a half to four hours at the very minimum. And I would probably even go to six if it were me cooking in the oven. I don't know for sure. Oh, look at that delicious meat. Look at the tender meat. Oh my gosh. It's going to be so good. So the next thing that I like to do is I like to actually get a measuring cup. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to grab my flour. If I can find it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so at this point, the, the bones and the meat is out of the, um, the cooker, the Instapot. What I'm going to do is kind of lean my Instapot to the side, and it's on simmer right now. That's just one of the functions that it has. And I'm going to take, um, actually I'm going to pour a little bit of this up, but I'm going to show you guys in a second what I'm going to really be doing with that. Okay. So anyway, I got like that much out of there now, which is about a cup of the uh, broth-ish type stuff we got going on with that. And then, so I'm going to take and just put a little bit of flour in, in this guy, in this uh, measuring cup that has that broth in there. And I just kind of... So then what, this is just regular flour. You guys can use cornstarch if you'd like to, but anyway, I'm just gonna take that and slowly, slowly just kind of give it a little stir to where it looks more on the pasty end. Just kind of give that a quick little stir. pasty and then you can always add just a little bit more of that liquid okay guys so now that we have the um the juice off of here and the water and everything and the flour in there so i'm just going to kind of pour that in there but i don't want it to get like all the way uh 
you know, like lumps in there. But anyway, I'll let that do its thing for one second. Okay guys, so anyway, now that I have this thickening with the flour and everything like that, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a taste. It still doesn't see you guys, my meat is right here. So it still um, doesn't have the meat back in yet. But you wanna give that a taste. So that, I tasted it, I feel like it's definitely missing something. So what I'm gonna do is actually add a little bit of pepper to this little gravy mixture back here. And, let me see, I want to add a dot of a little accent in there. And there was one more thing that I was going to add, which was my Lowry's. Okay, guys, so I'm going to add just a little Lowry's. Now I'm going to get a fresh spoon. I'm going to taste it again because I want to see where we're at. Just give that like a little, little stir there and see that's kind of like thickening, okay? Yeah, so that's getting thicker, just letting that kind of cook down. And so, um, oh, yeah, let me actually taste and see, do we still need to add anything else? I think it's perfect. So at this point, we're going to actually grab our potatoes, and I had cut those up a little bit ago. So I typically was adding about, um, yeah, I was typically adding about one um, potato for every pound of meat, you know. So that's kind of what I did, because that's what makes the most sense, okay. Actually, I'm, I'm, I usually use about one um, potato for every couple of servings, you know, no, for every, yeah, for every two servings or so, so that everybody gets some potato in the meat. But as you guys can see, we're just putting it right in here, in our Instapot, and... We're just going to kind of, at this point, we're going to go ahead, we're going to put our meat in there, and then we're going to let the Instapot go. Oh my gosh, just can you guys even see it? I mean, hold on, let me just pick that up for you and make sure you guys are getting a good view. Watch, watch. Whoa, slippery sucker, but look at that. Oh, it wants to just fall apart even more. Oh... So anyway, I just kind of replaced the short ribs at this point to the Instapot. And I think I'm going to dash out just a little bit of paprika in there, the ever smallest amount. So yeah, like I said, I'm going to add a dash of paprika. And then I'm just going to let that go ahead and finish up for about 10 minutes for the potatoes. Let yeah. that go ahead and cooking down. And I'm going to put that to meat and I'm going to do 12 seconds. So we're good to go on that. And then over here I have the Brussels sprouts. What I ended up doing with um, the Brussels sprouts is adding a little bit of a ham in there, little chunks of ham. And then I did a little bit of red pepper flakes, just a little bit, just because we wanted a little bit of color in there. And I even added a little bit of bacon oil from it. Now that's not required, like it won't taste good without it, but you know. So you could do without the bacon, um, bacon bits and the um, bacon oil and the uh, pieces of ham if you'd like so we're just going to cover that up let that just kind of sit there on warm while we just wait for the last 10 minutes 12 minutes on the instapot we're going to come out and see how it's looking okay so i'll see you guys in a second 
Okay guys, so now I'm just gonna take some of this uh, Texas toast, uh, New York Texas toast, um, and it's in the frozen section, and I'm just putting this in the oven and stuff right quick. Okay, there we go. So in the meantime, we got a couple more minutes left on the pressure cooker, and then we will be plating the food. So stay tuned for the last little bit. Okay, y'all, so now, guess what? Dinner is served. So, a total of this is like about a two-hour process. Uh, when that's with the Instapot, okay? But what I'm going to do is go in the pot. I'm going to make my husband's plate. And uh, give him some of that extra. Oh, the potatoes, they kind of came apart, but we'll live. We're still going to eat them, okay? Let's get down there to the potatoes without making them get too much more. I guess I could have did five minutes in here in the um, in the deal with the uh, a little bit more meat. Let's see here. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to get some of these good old Brussels sprouts with the ham, the diced ham and stuff. Yeah. And a couple more Brussels sprouts. And then I'm going to. Kind of just wipe that plate off because that's what I like to do to make sure it's nice and neat whenever I serve anyone, especially my husband. And then I'm going to just put a piece of bread on there. And then he's all good to go. So that is the end result, guys, of tonight's dinner, which is the uh, beef short rib and the potatoes and the Brussels sprouts. So in the meantime, guys, I wanna thank you guys for staying tuned for this video. Enjoy the rest of your night. But don't forget to do me a favor, like, comment, share, and subscribe my channel. God bless.